Hi, this is Jeff Bryant with Contact, and we're here today with Angela Jennings. We have a special episode where we're going to be taping the November fights, Brawl in the Fall, at the Fillmore. So, um, how are you today, Angela? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. It's very nice to meet you. Um, yeah. So, how long have you been in the martial arts? Well, I actually trained back uh, about four years ago. I only did it for like a couple months. Mm -hmm with uh, mixed martial arts. I just got thrown okay. right into it, and then I took some time off school and did some school stuff and worked. And But I for, seriously and competition-wise, I've been training for about 10 months now. About 10 months? Yeah. Okay. And has it been strictly uh, MMA? or I know that I was watching you doing some uh, one of your jiu-jitsu matches mm -hmm. at the MSOA tournament. Yes. Okay. And you took second place there? Yep. Was that your first jiu-jitsu tournament or? Um, no, I've been actively doing jiu-jitsu tournaments for, I'd probably say, about six or seven months. I did a, okay. I did a tournament before I ever did my first fight. Okay. So um, I've been doing you know, jiu-jitsu tournaments here and there, mm -hmm. but between the mixed martial arts and the, the fights, okay. it's hard for me to concentrate on just jiu-jitsu tournaments. Yeah. So. I know, I was, I was watching it and you had what, like three fights or four fights? Yep, um, uh, I've had matches, four, I'll not be fights, on but matches, fifth. right? Yep. Matches, yeah. Okay, and um, I was noticing one of your matches, it was your second to last match. Uh -huh. It looked like you were caught in a triangle choke for about, what was that, about two or three minutes? At least, at, at least. least. Yes. At, at any point in time, did you feel like, this is it, I'm going to tap out? I, or At one point in time, I thought I was going to pass out, actually, yeah. but I was not, I was not going to tap. Yeah, that must have, I mean, people watching it must have <laughs> just been amazed, because I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, she did a video of herself here, or somebody oh, did, and, yeah, and it, looks like, yeah, it looks like she's going to go out and... Yeah, I was amazed. You fought through it and then yeah. ended up getting her in a, um, what was it, an arm bar? Or I uh, did a, uh, a Kimura on a her. A Kimura yep. on her, okay. And uh, I, could hear, I could hear her coaches, too. She's going to pass out. Don't, yeah. you know, don't give up. And I just remember being like, I'm going to pass out because <laughs> I'm not tapping out. So I definitely almost did. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that was, that, like I said, that was pretty amazing. Now how, now, how much does that really prepare you for the MMA fights? Well, the jiu-jitsu, I actually initially started doing jiu-jitsu tournaments mm -hmm. to kind of get myself exposed to the competition level before okay, I stepped yep. into the cage. Mm -hmm. Because it's just this, it's the experience that beats you most of the time. You know, yeah. like, it's one's athletic ability, but it's all mental. Mm -hmm. So I started doing jiu-jitsu tournaments to prepare myself mentally for, mm -hmm. you know, competition, especially because I'm not used to competing against women because I don't yeah. have any women at my gym right now. Yeah, I so noticed like, that you were like the that, only one. Yep. It's like that adrenaline, you mm -hmm. know? So yep. I started doing it to expose myself. Mm -hmm. More. And, you know, it's hard to explain to a lot of people that, that don't fight or don't compete at that level that, you know, that adrenaline rush you get before, that adrenaline letdown. Right, or it's whatever the dump. you get. Yes. Yeah, the dump. That, you know, you're hyped up, you're in the back, especially for the MMA fights, right? You're in the back, you're getting hyped up, you're the first one out, and then all of a sudden the other person's hyped up, and then you just have to wait, and you yep. just have that drain, and it feels like you've already fought a whole fight before you yep. even start, right? Literally, yeah, yeah, it's like you already burnt yourself out before the mm -hmm. fight. So it's almost like 80 to 90 percent mental, mm -hmm. and that's you know that's why I started doing that those tournaments mm -hmm. because I would have it literally an adrenaline dump. Like mm -hmm. I have adrenaline yeah. dumps, and it's like yeah. you have to control that. Yeah, like my I have a my, my son. He's 20 now, and he's getting ready to to uh, do some MMA fighting, and um, it's very difficult to get him a fight because he's been in a martial arts since he's four years old. Oh, yeah. So everybody that wants to step up and fight him has seven or eight fights. Mm -hmm. He's an O and O fighter, and they go, "Well, we've seen him fight. We know he's tough. We know this." And I'm going, "Yeah, but he's never been hit in the face first off with four ounce gloves." Exactly. He's and never... he has an experience. I mean, he's experienced the, you know, like you going into your jujitsu match. Mm -hmm. That's a different adrenaline rush than you get from actually going into the oh, cage. Oh yeah, cage, cage is completely different. Yeah. So, and I, that's why I keep telling him, "Yeah, he's a good. He's strong. He's a, he's a decent kid, but." We don't know how he's going to react. I mean, mm -hmm. your coaches know that they've seen you. They go, okay, we know she's not going to tap out, but when she's physically getting hit in the face, how is she going to react until you physically get hit in the face? Right. It's all about how you react. Some yep. people can't handle it. Yep. They get hit in the face the first time, and it's like the whole world changes. Yep, exactly. So you said that you bet. So at your, your the place of training is um, the Ultimate Fighting Academy yep. out of Flint. Yep. And they do... Uh, Muay Thai fighting is, as well as the jiu-jitsu, or do you just do the jiu-jitsu there? Well, it's a, you know, uh, my coach, Andre Garcia, is very mm -hmm. strong in jiu-jitsu. He is known for jiu-jitsu, you okay. know. And um, we are a very strong jiu-jitsu school, but okay. I train everything. He trains okay. me in, you know, boxing, Muay Thai, all of it. So. Okay. But you've never had any traditional martial arts training, just 
No, I would have to say, I mean, I did do Tang Soo Do as a child. Okay. I did do it for a little bit, but it just wasn't my thing, and I ended okay. up dropping it because, you know, in high school, I did every other sport there was. And okay, so you were very active in high school then? Oh, yes. What sports did you play in high school? Well, in high school, I did basketball, volleyball, track, and powerlifting. Okay. Yeah. So you were very active. So then when you got out of high school, it's like, now what do I do, right? Right. Well, actually, I blew my knee out my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. Like the first game of my senior year. I played basketball for 13 years. My senior year, first game, first 30 seconds, mm -hmm. blew my entire knee out. Oh. So I had to have reconstructive knee surgery. And then after I got out of high school, I was just like, wasn't the same, you know? Yep. And like when I knew I got better. And mm -hmm. I walked on my uh, Mott Community College volleyball team, played for a year, and then I I got exposed to mixed martial arts. Like I'd always watched it on TV. It was a daddy's girl. I watched mm -hmm. the UFC, yep. you know. And I went to a fight. You know, it was my friend's fight. I drove okay. to Tennessee to watch him. And um, after I saw it live, I was like, Oh my God, I have to do this. Yeah. I was like, Dad, <laughs> we got we got to call somebody. You know. As soon as I got back to Michigan, I made a phone call. Okay, great. And what's your record in um, in MMA? Right now, it's one in three. One in three. Yes. Okay. And who, who are you fighting? Do you know who you're fighting yet, or? As of right now, it is Caitlin Dykus. That's okay. all I know. Um, there's been a couple girls. He's got a couple girls on call right now just in mm -hmm. case, you know, okay. backups. But as of right now, it's a girl named Caitlin Dykus. And, and that's one of the toughest things, too, about amateur fighting. I mean, like, uh, uh, the pro fighters, you know, they can actually go online. They can look at fights of people that yep. they're fighting, and they, they know it. And those people are pretty credible. They're going to show up or they're not going to get paid. Exactly. You guys don't get paid. It's just for the love, right? Yep. It's so. all, yeah, it's whether you love it or you don't, you yeah. know? And then, and then the, you know, like I said, my, my son, he's, he's actually had three fights, and every one of his opponents have backed out. And they're like five and two fighters. Yep. By the time it comes time for him to fight, I get a call the week before, and it's like, hey, there's a, uh, you know, the guy's not going to show. Let's, let's put him in mm -hmm. there with this guy. I go, well, no, he's 20 pounds heavier. And, exactly. And, and that's the things you got to go through, right? Oh, yeah. I've, I've had people back out at the weigh-ins. You know, oh. I've gotten yeah. the promoter telling me, oh, so-and-so, this, that, and the other thing. I'm just... That's the one thing about the amateur level, she especially so mean female. Now. Well, especially females, you know, <laughs> because it's already hard enough because there's not enough of us. Yes. So that's why when somebody backs out of a fight, it's so devastating because it's like they're supposed to find somebody at the last mm -hmm. minute when the numbers just aren't there. Yeah. So. Um, so do, do you know the background of the fighter that you're fighting, whether she's a stand-up or a ground? or? I don't know much about her, but mm -hmm. I mean, I do know that she is strong in stand-up. She okay. looks very tough stand-up wise. Okay. That's about all I know. I don't know what gym she's out of, but okay. I heard she's a tough stand-up okay. fighter okay so then uh, you've never seen her fight or know how she fights or mm -mm. yeah that that would be the hardest thing you know because yeah. you you know like i said the pros they actually or if you actually know that you know the guy comes from a strong stand-up background yep so you know you kind of got some kind of an idea but i think in a, but in another way though you have to fight your fight right exactly see there you're going to try to match your fight to theirs so you just have to go out there and do what you do yeah right? like when i train i train everything yep. i train every scenario that way i'm ready for everything yep now, do, do most of your fights go to the ground, or do you like to stand and bang, or do you... It just it depends on mm -hmm. who I'm fighting, honestly. Okay. If I feel I need to go to the ground, I'll yeah. go to the ground. If I feel to stand, you know, it's just I mm -hmm. kind of go with it. I have had my fights do everything. Okay. We're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be right back <laughs> with contact. Mm -hmm. Contact here with um, Angela Jennings, and she's going to be fighting in November second at the Brawl in the Fall. And you said that you, you've had four fights. When did, when was your first fight? That's a funny story. Um, my first fight, I had a, a debut scheduled. Okay. And it was for uh, June. 
And in May, I got a phone call, well, my coach did, from actually Donna Frio's people. I had okay. fought my first fight at Joe Louis Arena. Oh. And I remember my coach calling me and was like, oh, you know, you know this girl, look her up online, you know? Mm -hmm. And he's like, what do you think? I'm like, oh, yeah, she's good. He's like, would you fight her? I'm like, yeah, maybe one day. He's like, tomorrow. <laughs> And I was like, Joe Louis Arena, tomorrow, less than 24 hour notice. Yep. It's like, what do I got to lose, you know? I took the fight and it was honestly fight of the night. It, we, we, were told, we were told it was mm -hmm. fight of the night. It was, mm -hmm. went three rounds. I ended up losing to rear naked choke in the third round. Okay. But it was, it was a great experience. I couldn't have asked for a better debut. Okay. And it great. was for, it was down So that was this show. year then? Yes. So you've had all your fights this yes. year. So this will be your... Going on your, your fifth fight of the year. Yeah, and actually okay. the last two were right in a row. I had three fights scheduled three weekends in a row. Okay. So, because like I said, you got to take them when you when you take can. Them when you, when so you that's get why them, like yep. I'm always I'm always ready. You yep. know, I stay ready. That way, if I get a phone call says you want to fight tomorrow, yep. I try to stay and wait. You know. Yeah. So you've uh, you fought a couple of times with Joe Donofrio. Who else? What other uh, promoters out there have you fought with? I have fought for uh, Ron DeLeon. Okay. And then I also recently went to Wisconsin. And fought for was it the NC? It's like the NC. I don't can't even think of the name of it, but it was out in okay. Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin group for the um, battle in the ballroom. Okay, it was a big venue. Um, what do you think the? How do the audiences like the women out there fighting? It, it seemed to be a little bit you know more lively when the men when the women get out there and start fighting. It is. It depends on the fight. It's like right okay. off the bat, either the crowd loves it or they don't. Okay, you know because yep. they're expecting. You know, there it is a girl fight, but you know. Yeah. It's either got to, it's either a good fight or it's a horrible fight. Yeah. There is no in between with women. Okay. You know. So, and are you the only um, woman fight on a on a card? I do not know that. Um, usually, there are not that many women fight okay. female fights on the card. I believe at the last show at Joe Lewis, I was the only mm -hmm. fight. And then the other card I fought for in Wisconsin, I believe there was two or three of us. But okay. you know, that's out of twenty fights. Mm -hmm. So. So you you are fighting for the one twenty five title then, right? Yes. Okay, and you said that. You know, like, is so you generally don't cut weight. That is your walk around weight, so you don't have to, like, you're ready to go. Well, most I do of the time. cut weight, but yep. I keep it within a reasonable amount mm -hmm. to where if I had a week, I could just do it comfortably. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. I don't want to kill myself. But. And I guess I'm kind of ignorant when it comes to the, the women's weight classes. So they're 125, and do they go to 135? Or yep. do they go? I believe okay. it goes 115, 125, 135, 145, and so on. Okay, great. So where do you see yourself going from here? As of right now, I'm um, you know taking time off school mm -hmm. because I'm I'm 100%. I'm a full time okay. training, fighting. Right. Um, I work part time, but just enough to get by. But really, I okay. literally want to see where this takes me. Okay. So how many? How realistically, how many amateur fights do the amateurs actually have, or do you ever think about? You know, if I do turn pro, it's going to be when I'm a certain age, or you know, I only want to have 20, 30 fights or what, what is your goal there well with that it just depends you know you mm -hmm. have to you know take your opportunities mm -hmm. because you know every fighter only has so many fights in them it's yep. very physically brutal to your mm -hmm. body so you but you don't want to go pro too soon because once you go pro there is no going back but yep. there is a time limit you know mm -hmm. like I can't be one of those you know I don't want to be one yep. of those girls that has or guys you know that's, yep. that's like 20 and 5 you yep. know because it's just not worth the wear mm -hmm. and tear on your body when you're an amateur yep. So you want to go pro. I want to go pro as soon as possible. You know, okay. I get my experience, mm -hmm. and then when I'm ready, I'll go, you know, because once mm -hmm. you're pro, you know, you're back to zero, and you start a whole new career from there. Yep. So, yeah, because, and, and really, I think people, and this is in all sports when you're talking about amateurs, I think people get too tied up into records because you can be a one in three right now but yep. fought real reputable opponents, and that doesn't really say much about you, right? I mean, exactly. especially like the last fight you said, it was fight of the night. It was your very first fight. Probably could have went either way. Yeah, honestly, you know? yeah, honestly, it it really does. Because even after that fight, even though I lost, mm -hmm. I had a hard time getting fights because mm -hmm. I was 0 and 1. But all the inexperienced girls that were, you know, 0 and 1, 1 yep. and 0, would not fight me because yep. they felt that I had too much experience. Because mm -hmm. I fought a girl at Joe Lewis that night as my debut. She was like 3 and 1 at the time, had a okay. title belt. She was a, a tough girl, you mm -hmm. know. So because I had fought her, I had already been. Mm -hmm. you know, up the scale in experience because of who I fought and how I did. You know, I yeah. set the bar higher than they expected. So after mm -hmm. that, I was technically experienced. Mm -hmm. are, are you the only person from your club fighting um, on November, or do you have other... Um, I believe I'm the only one the for only all one? of all, yes. Okay. And you, were, you were talking about a little earlier about you being the only woman and your... What do you, what do you guys call it there? I'm not much on 
uh, jiu-jitsu. So I know we, we call it a dojo yeah, here. Yeah, dojo academy. Academy, yeah. okay. So being the only woman at your academy, um, how many men, and, and is it difficult just to train with men? I mean, for women, I'm not going to lie. We have a couple, but they are not competitors. You know, okay. they're there yep. for self-defense. Mm -hmm. or So I don't spar or anything with them. That's why mm -hmm. I don't really, you know, mm -hmm. for me, yeah. training, like, you know, my fight team training, yep. it, it is difficult, but they know how to push me without hurting me. Mm -hmm. They don't take it easy on me mm -hmm. by any means, but they know how to push me to the, you know, to the point because yep. they know how far to push me. You know, yep. they know I'm not going to, you know, I'm a tough girl, but I'll let them know if enough's enough. So are, are you a big fan of the UFC? Or are you watching the women that are in the house right now? I have been, yeah, I've been trying to keep yep. up with the, yep, the yep. new UFC. It's definitely exciting having women on the show now. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different. You know, they have women in the house and men in the house. And, and um, to me, I find it funny because my wife's a fourth degree black belt. Mm -hmm. I'm a seventh degree. I'm getting ready to test oh. for my seventh degree here pretty soon anyways. Six degrees, so don't take nice. that too personal out there, world. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, so... But the thing is, people are always like, well, she must be pretty tough. She could, you know, I'm like, I'm still a 260-pound man that has the same you're skills still, as you're her. You're still a man, and, yes. And I watch the UFC, and I see those women in there, and the guy was training with one of the women, and he says, she just doesn't know how to take it easy. And he goes, I had to, you mm -hmm. know. And, you know, there are differences, you know, like we were talking a little bit earlier about kid muscles. Like one of my kids that's like 14 years old, he's very good, but he's still 14 years old. Yes. You know, he is no way, even though he's the same size, I take him to point karate tournaments and he'll, he can go out there with the men, but if they actually start training real punches, and exactly. he found that out when he had a match, a uh, kickboxing match, and he fought a kid that was 16 years old, and even 16-year-old muscles mm -hmm. versus 14-year-old muscles, I mean, he got caught up into a clinch, he couldn't get out because he just didn't have his strength. Right. You know, so. That's how, you know, that's why I think it's funny when guys are like, Oh, you can beat me up. I'm yep. Like you're still a man. Yeah. Like yeah, maybe jujitsu wise, yeah, yep. I could probably yep. submit you. But if we, st I'm not standing toe to toe yep. with a guy. You know, like for real. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, and, and for the w and women and men and everybody out there, like when I teach self defense to women, it's um, you know, basically it's yes, you could hurt, you could hurt me very bad. But if you were to stand there after even breaking my leg, and I could get my hands yep. on you, and um, but I did read an article about a woman that um, she was a professional kickboxer. And she got attacked, and she actually knocked the guy out. But then she went over to the guy mm -mm. afterwards, and he woke up. And in the middle of that, he stabbed her with whatever he yeah. had in her hand. And then she ended up knocking him up and beating the guy up again afterwards. But the whole thing was is, no, you beat the guy and up, you run and away. you leave. Yes. You know? And that's even for me or any, anybody else out there, because the whole thing of self-defense is getting away. Right. You know, it's not... Okay, I've, I've disarmed them and I've taken them and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go from there. So, well, we wish you a lot of luck in your um, fight and hopefully you come victorious. Yes. And we're going to be following your career. Um, anything you'd like to say to anybody out there? Now you got a chance? Because, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I'd like to thank my coach, Andre Garcia, for um, the ability to take such a, a big venue on and Joseph Donofrio for allowing me to be on the card. Well, great. Well, look forward to seeing you, and good luck. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. You're right about that. You're right about that. We got our first girl fight, though. Yeah, this is a girl fight. It's a 125 championship belt um, with uh, Caitlin. Caitlin Dykes. And, uh, and, a and Angela from, Jennings. She's fought for my organization, Elite Federation of Fighters, and Elite Federation Kickboxers. She fought at 145 for me. She fought at 135 for me. And I am interested in seeing how she looks at 125. Okay. I would have never believed she could make that weight. Okay. I would have never believed it. Well, first one, first one up is Angela. And Angela is a, uh, she is a, a, a Muay Thai uh, fighter as well as a jiu-jitsu. She is a jiu-jitsu champion as well. Oh, yeah. She is our spotlight right? fighter on contact this week. So, uh, wow. Yeah, so this is going to be a great fight. Angela just started fighting uh, about a year ago and has already had four fights in the ring. They called her up for her first fight, she said, and they said, are you uh, ready to fight for us? And she said, yeah. She said, when? And they go, tomorrow night at Cobo Hall. Her first fight was at Cobo Hall with um, the Impact Fight League and, and lost a, a three-round decision, um, split decision at that. Let me tell you something. She's trained at uh, UFA, Ultimate Fighting Academy. I see Andre Garcia right there in the corner. That guy's a legit jiu-jitsu guy. 
one of the top jiu-jitsu guys in Michigan over at UFA. Yeah. And, um, you know, I don't even think he's got his black belt yet. I think he's like me. He's a high-level brown belt. Getting ready to get his black belt soon. But he's got legit ground game. So I am excited to see what she's going to bring to the table. Look at her, man. She is ripped up. Good oh, yeah. grief. We're going to bring out our contender for the blue feather next. And she's ready. She's got a great personality. Let's see how well Angela does. But her uh, opponent's coming in the ring right now. Like you said, I looked up. I looked her up on Facebook because I didn't uh, see any of these fighters. And Caitlin, um, she, she, like you said, she's put together. And I, I, and I looked at her. I couldn't believe that she was fighting at one, you know, 125 as well. So Caitlin's primarily a kickboxer, and this is going to be a style clash right here. And I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen. Her coach is uh, Master Paul from IMMA. It's one of her coaches, and I also know she trains at another gym as well. I'm not sure where. I'm not sure if her ground game has gotten very much better, but she's primarily a kickboxer. That's what she likes to do. So it's going to be a Styles clash, and Styles may fight. So you're going to see a great kickboxer right now against a great jiu-jitsu practitioner. I am excited. Well, I was watching a, I was watching a video of uh, Angela in uh, a jiu-jitsu match, and um, her opponent had her in a, in a choke, in a, a triangle choke, for about three minutes. You got to be kidding. And she actually got out of it and actually applied an arm bar of her own. And, and, um, and the girl tapped out. Let me tell you something. A choke takes about six to eight seconds yep. to be able to put a person out of consciousness. Yep. She was in there for three minutes, man. She's doing something she incredible. Was, she was fighting. Like you said, though, her coach is a well-renowned uh, jiu-jitsu fighter, and she's the only girl out of her gym. So she's wow. used to fighting guys all the time. You know what? That makes a world of a difference. You know, definitely, as you know, Jeff, as you're branching out to many things, Outside of just the one thing that you got your mastery in, the martial arts is big and it's broad, you know, and we want to make sure that we're delving into various aspects of it. One of the things that I'm blessed with and I'm proud of is I'm getting a lot of traditional martial art black belts coming to my academy to start learning jiu-jitsu because they want to branch out, not necessarily fight, but they just want to really round out their game. I just signed another one up this past week and we're growing this way. So people are starting to learn and understand that in this activity, you need to be well-rounded. Well, Angela said she's not afraid to stand and bang. And she said it's not she'll smart speak. though. If you're great at something, why would you do something else? Yep. You know, I, I don't get that about wrestlers and jiu-jitsu practitioners. A striker can say, hey, you're a fraidy gang. You're a chicken. You won't stand and bang with me. Yes. But you never hear, you know, a striker say, oh, well, you know, I'm going to go and wrestle with you and submit you. They never do that. No. If you are an expert in some area, Stick to that particular area of expertise because you've taken your entire life to become good at that. So why change? Caitlin Dykes looks amazing at 125, man. She looks amazing, man. Watching the ladies fights, I'm standing here looking at uh, Angela's feet. She's got her toenails painted. Um, you don't see a lot of fighters with toenails painted. Hey, man. We're in a new era right now, man. We got women in the UFC, man. We don't see anything in MMA nowadays. But I thought that they used to make them not have uh, paint on their nails because it's a way to see if they're actually knocked out or not. Like, they press your nail, and if they see color come in, they can tell like how your how your blood's flowing by your nail. Is that right? Yeah, I did not but know then that. Again, in the UFC, you, you know, you got a uh, uh, few of the male fighters that actually uh, paint their nails. Yeah, yeah. Show the respect, tap the hands. Angela is. Uh, Andre Garcia is already stuff. yelling at her to get busy. Great jiu-jitsu practitioner, Andre UFA. Great leg kick by Caitlin. Angela throws a great knee. She's going for that takedown. 
She's got the takedown. She's almost at the mile. Oh, that was a good punch. If she gets the mile, oh, she's got the back. She's got the guard. Her coach yelling, protect the ground and pound. That means keep her close. Angela's landing some good blows from the bottom. Andre Garcia is selling her control of the head. That way she can't posture up and throw big shots. He's going for a high guard right now. That means he's ready for it to attack a submission. Kaitlyn Dykus needs to really frame up right now so she can get some ground upon the work on passing that guard. She's already got Caitlin cut pretty bad with a couple of those shots. And yeah, she hit her with a really good blow when she took her down. They're right here in front of the uh, booth, Jeff, and I'm telling you, man, these are some thunderous shots. These ladies are right here in front of us. I am fired up right now with this action. Caitlin's framing up right now. She's got to watch her arm, though. Andre Garcia yelling for the arm bar. Caitlin's on her back. She tries to roll to get out of it. It's tight. Caitlin's got it tight. She's sleep. She's sleep. Caitlin does it. Caitlin Dykes does it. She submits and puts to sleep the jujitsu expert in Angie City. Looks like Caitlyn's got a little bit of jiu-jitsu herself. I told you what I said. I said she's primarily a striker. I know she trains with Master Ball. I said I'm not familiar with her other gym that she trains with. So I didn't know if she was getting her jiu-jitsu up, you know, at the training compound. And obviously, as you can see, they definitely have been working with her on the ground game. Like I told you, I said I know that, uh, that, that Angela got caught up in that, um, that choke for about three minutes. She will not tap. She will go out. She didn't tap me. You're right about that. You called that one out. She fought right to the end. A lot of heart. Both fighters. Great fight. Great girl fight. Excellent fight. I always say when they keep saying, you know, you fight like a girl, sometimes that's a compliment. That's right. You're right about that. <laughs> Angela's problem, she shouldn't have tried to spike her like that. If she would have used her jiu-jitsu training, she could have worked her way out of that guillotine while it was on the feet. When you try to jump and flip and spike a person to get out of a technical submission like that, it's the all or nothing. If it doesn't work out for you, you put yourself deeper in it. And that's what happened. If it takes four to six, six to eight seconds, if, if it takes six to eight seconds to go out, you can't afford to waste any of that time, Jeff. You gotta be using all of those six to eight seconds to get out of there. And when you're flipping and flopping and spinning and jumping, you're taking valuable seconds away from that escape. Well, congratulations. Caitlin Dyke is already talking about her first defense. Like, what, Caitlin is a very happy young lady right now, taking home her belt. And we she know that be. Angela will be back. She's a young fighter. She's only this is her fifth fight and already fighting for a belt. So she'll be back fighting for a belt again soon. Um, she I'm sure her coach will definitely have her ready. And, and like uh, Isaiah was saying, you know, uh, uh, when, you're, when you're in an MMA fight, it's a little bit different than a jiu-jitsu fight. And a lot of times they, you know, they kind of forget where they're, where they're, where they're, where they're where the training is, and they try to do some things that they're not really trained to do, and they need to stick to what they know. This is all we have time for. Thanks for watching Contact Sports with Jeff Bryant, and again, a special thanks to Joe Donofrio, MMA, and Impact Fight League.